The PIP2 project is nothing short of extraordinary. When complete, this megawatt particle accelerator will power the next 50 years of discovery at Fermilab. It's the first U.S. particle accelerator project with major international contributions. Research institutions in France, India, Italy, Poland, the United Kingdom, and across the United States are working together on PIP2. Building, testing, and operating various components for the new accelerator has already begun. So what's so special about PIP2? At the core of the project is a linear particle accelerator that uses the latest technological advances to create and propel high-energy particle beams. At 215 meters long, about the length of two football fields, PIP2 will propel particles to 84% of the speed of light. It will have the unique ability to deliver particle beams in either a steady stream or a pulsed mode, which will enable new, innovative experiments. Researchers will use the transforming potential of artificial intelligence and machine learning to deliver flexible beam patterns to users quickly, reliably, and with minimal operational effort. So how does PIP2 work? PIP2 starts with a bottle of hydrogen gas. One bottle provides enough particles to send beams to our experiments for a few months. The machine uses electric fields to accelerate particles to high energy. But these fields can only propel electrically charged particles, not the neutral atoms found inside hydrogen gas. The solution is a filament similar to the wire inside an old electric light bulb. Placed inside a chamber filled with hydrogen gas, the filament provides the electrons that turn neutral hydrogen molecules into negatively charged particles. A static electric field of 30,000 volts then gives the particles their initial propulsion for their journey through the accelerator. The next stages of PIP2 use oscillating electromagnetic fields to increase the speed and energy of the particles. When tuned just right, charged particles will surf along these electromagnetic waves like a surfer on the ocean. The different stages operate like different gears and are optimized for the increasing speed of the particles. Each stage requires its own unique structure and radio frequency to produce the right electromagnetic waves. The first stage with oscillating fields is this radio frequency quadrupole accelerator, or RFQ, which was designed by Berkeley Lab. It operates with a radio frequency of 162.5 MHz. Inside, an intricate pattern of peaks and valleys made of copper creates the wave pattern necessary to simultaneously accelerate the particles and keep them focused. The device is only four and a half meters long, and it propels particles as if it had an electric field of 2.1 million volts. As the beam exits the RFQ device, a series of magnets further focuses the beam and keeps the particles from straying from the center line. These magnets were built at the Baba Atomic Research Center in India. In total, India will contribute almost 100 magnets for PIP2, so that the beam stays almost laser-like throughout the accelerator. Next, the particles will enter the superconducting section of PIP2. It is by far the longest section of the machine. It also is powered by radio frequency waves. But here, the structures are cavities made of niobium. When cooled to minus 271 degrees Celsius, they propel particles much more efficiently than the ones made of copper. The frigid temperature of the cavities, which is about the temperature of outer space, means the niobium conducts electricity without resistance. As a result, the cavities generate nearly no heat and thus impart almost all their energy to the particles passing through them. The cavities are installed inside cryomodules. These are large cryogenic vessels that insulate the cavities and surround them with liquid helium to keep them at their ultra-cold temperature. The first cryomodule for PIP2 was built at Argonne National Laboratory and delivered to Fermilab in 2019. It operates at the radio frequency of 162.5 MHz, the same as the RFQ. In the next stage, the radio frequency doubles to 325 MHz, and the shape of the niobium cavities has changed as well. Scientists and engineers in India, France, and at Fermilab are responsible for the design, processing, testing, and assembly of these cavities and the nine cryomodules that contain them. When the particles exit this stage of PIP2, they are traveling at 54% of the speed of light, 
equivalent to an acceleration with 177 million volts. And they're about to go even faster. The final and longest part of the superconducting section is a set of 13 cryomodules. The particles traverse this final section in less than one millionth of a second. To get the timing of the electric fields right, scientists here use cavities that operate at an even higher radio frequency, 650 megahertz. These cavities also feature a different elliptical shape to optimize the energy transfer to the speedier particles. Upon exiting this section, particles will have gained an energy equivalent to 800 million volts and travel at 84% of the speed of light. Researchers at institutions in Italy, India, France, and the UK are building the components for this final section of PIP2 and will ship the assembled cryomodules to Fermilab when complete. Advancing this superconducting technology keeps Fermilab and its partners at the frontier of particle and accelerator physics. Depending on their design, frequency, and how their interior surfaces have been processed, niobium cavities can achieve acceleration gradients of more than 40 million volts per meter. That's a lot of bang within a short distance. It makes these cavities the technology of choice for modern, high-energy particle accelerators. For example, scientists at Fermilab use superconducting cavities to build state-of-the-art accelerator components for X-ray lasers and applications in quantum computing. When operational, PIP2 will be the new heart of Fermilab. It will provide substantially more particles for Fermilab's accelerator complex. The new megawatt proton beam will power the world's most intense neutrino beam for the International Deep Underground Neutrino Experiment and drive Fermilab's research program for decades to come.